let's talk about what's happened in Georgia. They have signed what is by far, it seems to me, the most extreme gun law in the country. You wrote about this uh, in the Daily Beast, right? Yeah, they have. I mean, it's um, it's, it's incredible, and and it, it, you know, other states, of course, on the heels of this, are going to want to follow along. I wrote a bill. I wrote a, a uh, article on this about a month ago, and we talked about in the show that you know the, that this had passed the legislature, and it was what Nathan Deal was going to do. And of course, you know, Nathan Deal uh, is, is is only worried about a primary from the right. So he's the governor of Georgia. So he signed this thing, which is just basically. It, it's, it's the guns everywhere, Bill. You're not talking about places of worship. You're talking about uh, uh, bars, sporting, sporting events, bars, uh, schools, libraries. Because, you know, we we haven't learned anything from Newtown, and we haven't learned anything from the three school shootings a month we have had in the 17 months since then. I, but it, I, but I, it, it not only that three a month. It not um, only allows guns in those areas. It basically de- decriminalizes. It basically says there's no punishment if you bring it into anywhere else. So, your airports. Right. You know what it is? It's a, if you bring it into one of these places where they tell you you're not allowed to. So, if a, a church pastor says it has the right to say you can't bring it in here, the the huge punishment for having done that, if you don't listen to this, is a hundred dollar fine. I mean, they made they basically made sure that there's there's it's like a speeding ticket to bring a gun into a place where someone has also told you that you can't. Um, and then, of course, the piece that we talked about last time, that one of the biggest parts of all that people are missing is it is illegal for felons to have guns in this country. Um, we're the few good laws after the, you know, we passed after the 1968 uh, the, the assassinations, and then we got the Brady Bill in 94, so there'd be background checks. Of course, there was the gun show loophole, which people who are quote-unquote private sellers uh, who just, you know, sell an antique gun out of their attic here or there, or, you know, 150 to 200 assault weapons a year, which we found to be the case, don't need to, to, to do any kind of a background check on people. So what they've done, of course, because the criminal market is very profitable for the NRA and, and all, the, all the arms dealers they front for, is they've made sure that criminals have all the access to guns they want. So now we're going a step further. You shouldn't have it, but you're going to be able to get it because we've made it possible. And now you have the right to assert, stand your ground. Uh, if uh, you if you decide if you're a felon in illegal possession of a gun, but somebody looks at you the wrong way and you're scared, you know they might pull a gun on you. You shoot them. You have the right to assert stand your ground. Uh, and it's it's absurd. It is it is absurd. Frankly, I I don't I don't know why other countries, particularly Western European and others, wouldn't literally do a travel warning like you do right. about going to to Saudi Arabia and or somewhere and just say I warn. I mean, I really think they should do that. Just be like, this is what this is what you're in for if you go to Georgia and any other state that passes that. You know? I, I mean, it may be just a matter of time. I mean, this is not going to. Uh, I don't think it's going to end, frankly, but it's not going to progress well. I should say. 